All right, so it's been a minute, uh, but I'm getting back into this, and uh, I want to continue on my series being Christian, right? Uh, excuse the mess and the chaos in my little office here because it has, yeah, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. We're getting there, right? One step at a time, we're getting there. Just like our walk with the Lord is one step at a time. That's it. That's what we're doing. We're doing it one step at a time. So today, what I want to focus on is what is religion, right? Versus what is relationship? Like, are you in religion or are you in a relationship? See, because I've had a lot of people come at me lately on social media and they've questioned. Um, I've had a lot of people that, you know, tag themselves or it's in their handle or they label it under there that they're an atheist, right? Which is fine. Um, everybody's got to come, you know, uh, everybody's on their own journey and on their own path and taking their own walk, right? And some people struggle for a long time and before they find their way and some people, you know, it's not... Our faith in God is not something to be forced upon others. It's not something to be forced. Now, some people have that misconception because they believe that we're supposed to force it. They believe that this is my mission in order to save souls. So therefore, I have to, I have to make it happen. No, no, no. You are a planter of seeds. You're a teacher. That's it. Go forth and teach, Jesus said. Go forth and teach. He did not say go forth and beat people over the head with your Bible. He did not say go forth and force and implement laws and policies that make it required for people to learn about God. No, absolutely not. Um, religion will not take you to Jesus. Religion will not take you to God. Religion will not get you to heaven. Now, there are some religions that they have all these practices and stuff, and those practices came from somewhere. And if you do some deep studying, and I'm not going to dive into it right now because the reality is, is we used to do a session back in the church that we were in in Austin, or in Austin, in uh, Oregon, and it was really cr incredible. But they do an hour to hour and a half dive into the, into one religion at a time. It was like an hour to an hour and a half, and we didn't even always finish everything because you can't really get the full depiction in just one study. So I'm not going to even attempt to do that right here. What I'm going to say is. That most of these religions, at some place, at some point, they had valid reason or cause behind their beliefs or their practices or their rituals or things like that. And some of those things are outdated, um, even in Christianity. In Christianity, there's, you know, um, people have a, a misconception of Christianity, even even Christians. But what typically is looked at is the religion of Christianity, the religious aspect of Christianity is that it's a practicing of the Bible, of God's word, right? So and if you're practicing based on God's word, and if you go, there's all these different laws that were implemented at one point. And Jesus said, what is most important at this point is to love God above all others and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That encompasses everything else that's important. It really does. If you can do that, if you could do that, then you'll get there, right? You're going to get closer and closer to living what a Christian lifestyle is. Because what a Christian lifestyle is, is living your life according to Christ. Living your life as Christ-like as possible every single day. So every single day, you're living your life trying to be more like Jesus. So if you're... There's these bracelets. I'm so glad. It was really cool. They In Sunday school, they gave them out to the boys um, just like two weeks ago. And I was like, man, that's so awesome. Because I've talked about it multiple times. Like, how do they not have these what would Jesus do bracelets anymore? It was like a fad. It was like a trend that was going around. And everybody had these bracelets. And it was like, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And the concept and idea is for you to act and think before you do anything. You, 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 you allow the process to go through your mind. Like, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus say what I'm about to say? Would Jesus do what I'm about to do? Would Jesus act in this particular manner? Would he carry himself like this? And we're not Jesus, but that's what being Christian is, is being as Christ-like as possible. So when you see these Christians out here who are beating people down, Jesus didn't beat people down. Jesus walked amongst the sinners 
And then when they asked him why, he said, because God loves you. God loves you. Like, why do you look at yourself as this is what you have to be because there's a better choice out there for you? Like he led through example. He's like, you don't have to live this way because you can have this. You don't have to do this because you can have that. Like, God is here for you. Let me show you what God can do, he said. Let me show you. And so that's what he did. He led through example and not through judgment, not through casting stones at people. When they asked him why he was different, he could tell them it was because his father in heaven. Now, us as Christians, that's the, that's the example that we need to set. We need to walk as Christians. We need to walk joyful, knowing that Jesus woke us up this morning, knowing that God put air in our lungs, right? And that Jesus is in our heart and he's going to carry us through the day. And that this idea of hope and fear, like it's a misconception. Like I've had people come at me telling me that, oh, because you're a Christian, you live your life through fear. That's the only reason they know I live my life in hope. I walk in hope every day. I hope that things are going to work out the way I want to, but I know that God's will is going to be done. And God's will is not always going to be mine. So I hope that, hey, you know, I hope, I hope the things that I want are in accordance to God's will, right? I hope that, that that business venture that I'm trying to do, I hope that God blesses it because I hope it goes according to his will. And I hope it glorifies the kingdom and helps to benefit not only my family, but the people around me. You know, um... The new curriculum we chose for the boys. I'm hoping <laughs> that this glorifies God and they learn the things they need to do and that they can excel in life and be more joyful in their life instead of being burdened by the uh, slightly too heavy curriculum we had last year. Each thing I do, I don't do in fear. I do in hope because I walk with Jesus. Jesus is hope. It says that in scripture. Jesus is hope. Hope is the absence Hope is the absence of fear. I do not walk in fear. And Isaiah says, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. So, being Christian, being Christian, being Christian is not religion. Religion is not being Christian. Being Christian is having a relationship with Jesus. See, we are, this is human nature. This is something we can't control, see? So if we surround ourselves, that's why in my post about business and stuff, I say surround yourself with people that you aspire to be like, right? As I tell it, I tell that all the time. I talked about that many times in many of my videos and many of my content. I've talked about surrounding yourself with people you aspire to be like. I had a professor once, this is a great story, I told this story before, but if you've missed it, uh, I, had a, I had a great professor once in a sociology class, and I was in a class that me and this other guy just happened to excel really well. Like all the concepts that she was teaching, they just came like kind of second nature to us. Um, sometimes you'll find yourself in a class like that, especially in college where you're trying to hit your marks. You, you may get into a class that you're like, this class, uh, I needed to take it, but did I really need to take it? Because everything just kind of... Makes sense, right? Um, so I remember sitting in, uh, outside of the classroom in the hallway with this teacher and this professor told me one day, she was like, she was like, one day, she's like, you're going to be at the next level. Because at the time I was at Austin Community College and I was working my way to University of Texas. She was like, you're going to find yourself in a classroom in, the, in UT. And I was like, yeah. She's like, you're going to find yourself in a classroom where you look around and instantly feel like the dumb guy in the room. And I was like, I'm going to be the dumb guy? She's like, you're going to feel dumb. You're going to feel real stupid. You're going to look around and see how everybody knows something that you don't know. And she was like, and you're going to love it. That moment is going to make you feel so good because she's like, I can see that you're eager to learn. And I really was. I really was. But I, I felt like in that class, that class, I felt like there was a, it was a lot of cool things. She did. She did teach me a lot of cool things. She absolutely did. But a lot of the basic core concepts of the course like I kind of just got, it just made sense to me. I'd done lots of psychology classes and sociology just kind of made sense. Um, so she was like, you're going to find yourself in a, and so that I've, I've 
lived within that concept and as I grew and learned and, and matured, that concept made more and more sense to me and I've, I've expressed this to many people. Like being surrounded where you feel like the dumb one, that's an incredible place to be because when you feel like you've got nothing but, like you just take, that's it. You soak it up and that's it's a human nature. It's selfish, it's whatever, but it is what it is. You're just gonna take. You're gonna soak up everything they pour out and see then you can be a good decent human being and you can pour that out into other people but you're gonna soak it up first because that's all you are you're just right there consuming everything they've got to offer because you feel inferior you feel dumb you feel like you've got nothing but everything to learn right um and i have actually been there and it was really cool um so i always talk about that in business and in life you surround yourself with people that are going to propel that are gonna excel, that are gonna boost you and thrust you into a new direction, right? That's Jesus though. Like that's Jesus. It's because you're gonna become like the people you surround yourself with. So you surround yourself with these successful business-minded people, successful life-driven people, these successful like Christian value, family-oriented, like I love my neighbor kind of people. You're gonna you're gonna soak that up. You're gonna be more like them, right? You surround yourself with people who love football. Y'all are gonna be excited to be watching football and hanging out and talking about fantasy football and stats and all that stuff. And you're gonna share and swap stories. You're gonna do it every single week. I got buddies like that. And it's awesome. Okay, because I love football. You, if you're someone who likes music and you surround yourself with people who, so it's like you're gonna be, you're gonna, it's gonna draw those things out of you. The more you surround yourself with those kind of people. So if you surround yourself with Jesus, you're going to be more like Jesus. So that's the idea is you want to be deeper in more close, tight relationship with Jesus. And then you don't have to keep looking at your bracelet. Hmm, I wonder what Jesus would do. Because it's going to come as second nature because Jesus is going to get in you. He's going to rub off on you more and more and more. Now you're still, I mean, the disciples, you look at all the disciples, man. Peter's one of my favorites. He's such a broken guy. He walked amongst Jesus. He saw his miracles again and again and again and again and again. He just did. And still, still amidst the many times that he saw, he still doubted. He still questioned. He still worried. He still felt inferior like I'm not the guy. But he was the guy. Jesus chose him. Jesus said, you're the guy. But he always felt like not good enough. Like he wasn't there. Like he wasn't ready. I, I remember the one of my favorite stories when Jesus said, step out onto the water. And he stepped out. He took two steps. And then all of a sudden he was like, wait a second. I'm not Jesus. And he fell into the water. But Jesus was like, I'm with you, man. Like Jesus was like, I'm with you. I, got, I, to I told you to do it. I wouldn't tell you to do something you can't do. Jesus told him. So that's what I'm saying. Being Christian is having a relationship with Jesus. And the deeper that relationship goes, the more you surround yourself with him, the more you're in fellowship with him, the more you sit and you break your bread and you talk to God. You, you know what? You can literally just talk to God like he's right here. Just talk to God. Just, hey, you know what's up? So today has been a rough day and I'm feeling like it could be going better. Speak to me, Lord. What is it I'm doing? What is it I'm missing today? What is it I'm not? What's not clicking? You could just say, you know what? Today, Lord, everything's been going great. Thank you so much. I'm feeling so good right now. I know challenges are coming, but I know with you, I will get through all. Just talk to him. He's your father in heaven. And hey, Corey, he's your father in heaven and he will be there for you. He will listen to you. He will support you. Like I said, Talk to Jesus every day. Talk to God every day. Have this relationship. And then this idea of trying to, what would Jesus do and be like Jesus is going to be second nature because he's going to be right. You're never going to be there. You're never going to be good enough. You're saved by his grace, not by your acts. But you will be closer if you just stop overthinking it and start spending more time with him. Spend more time in the word right here. Spend more time reading the scripture, diving into the word like I need to soak up the living word of God every day and then spend more time in prayer, in communion, in fellowship with your Lord and Savior. And if you do that, you're going to develop a deeper relationship with God and it's just going to be second nature and you're not going to have to think so much. That's it. It's relationship. It's not religion.
It's your boy. I hope this helps. Let that marinate. Let that sink in. Share it with somebody. All right. I love y'all. Y'all have a great day. I'm out.